Okay, this is a meeting to discuss um, some R1 things around package injection and all of that. So um, just recording it for others uh, who are interested later. Um, okay, so Wim, you wanna, um, the, the, should I display, I can display that package and we can, and then we can switch if. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay, so if we look at. Um, or I have, uh, I have one as well uh, here. I can share my screen. Well, I'll do this first and then, and then we'll switch. Okay, um, yeah. So in here. Um, yeah, and that one, yeah, you created. Uh, I created this. Did it not merge yet? Oh, no, yes. this is still open, I think, uh, because, yeah, I was not able to test this yet uh, myself, but I don't know, I think. To test, because you got, yeah, I have a, I think I put a link in here, I have a. Yeah, but I was busy with this closer context, I was oh, testing okay. that uh, out, and then it, it messes up my stuff, so I prioritized that. Okay. Now, yeah. But I looked at this, yeah, yeah. So this, although if, if we merged this, I think we merged, we might have merged this, so we might be able to, but anyway. Um, oh no, this doesn't merge because it's got, it's got like specific test only things in it. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to show was here. Um, so in this model, um, so, so part of the reason I needed to do this is that when package variant creates a clone, it then needs to manipulate that clone and, and the stuff that was in package context. So package context, I kind of abused the notion of package context by, by allowing us to mutate it. If it really was designed to be like kept controlled information about a package. And I, and what I didn't understand during the package variant design and development process was that it's actually regenerated from scratch each time. And yeah, so any defaults you put in it, you just get lost. So not only that, but you clone, it gets regenerated, then we mutate it. Like, and it, it seemed to be, I suspected it was causing some issues because every time one of these operations happens, reconciliations get triggered. And so I was seeing this period and I still see it, unfortunately, even with this change, but I still think this is a good change. Um, there's a period of sort of settling that happens where because it's the clone and mutation operations are independent and not atomic, you, the package variant controller clones mm -hmm. and that that throws out a potential reconciliation event to other controllers watching the package variant, package revisions. Yep. And then the package variant controller goes, okay, I'm gonna mutate it. But actually it happens so fast that I think there's some, some bugs in the porch server such that it, 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 there's some concurrency issues such that it happens so fast that like, I do the clone and then I try and pull the package revision resources and I get an error saying they're not found. And so then I come back and reconcile later and it eventually settles down, right? It's eventually consistent, but there's some issues in that process. And so in order to, when I had the auto approve controller, um, it would come in and it would start approving things even though they weren't really um, done. done. No. And so I did two things to fix that. Um, one is I just did the dumb thing of giving more time um, okay, the auto approved controller was waiting 30 seconds because of this issue. Now it waits two minutes before it does yeah. anything. But so more, it. better than that, I, I put in understanding of package variant into the auto approved controller. So now when it looks at a package revision, it looks at its owner's it reps and it says, is it owned by a package variant? If so, I'm gonna go check the conditions of that package variant. And if the conditions yeah, of that package variant says it's not ready yet, I'm not doing anything. So that's, I think that's really helped protect 
downstream damage from this settling process. I still think we have to fix the settling process. I think that's a deeper fix that's going to take longer though. So, so, um, so my way of addressing it right now was one, get rid of package context, which contributes to that, iter that, that thrashing. Um, two, fix the approval controller. Um, and so, uh, anyways, that's the context of, 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 of all of that. Maybe yeah, I, uh, uh, I got I, off on I, it. Uh, no, okay. no, I got some of that. Uh, yeah, not everything, but I got some of that, yes. Yeah, by the yeah, way, I see if I have R1 running for weeks, Porsche is crashing 100 times. I, I, I've got so a there must be there must be something and I am trying to I've been trying to dig into it but it's very hard to get any logging or information around it so this is where it's super useful to throw it on a GKE cluster because then all the logging goes to uh, ah. cloud logging. so I have actually there's an issue out there in the porch repo where I'm I, 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 Morton's gonna look at it he's been on vacation but um, yeah, there's some concurrency issues that we know cause crashing. Um, so don't, what I'm trying to say is feel free to dive into it if you want to, but it might be more effective to let Morton take a look at it. Um, yeah, I have been trying, but it's, uh, I don't really have the cycles to be honest. With you. I know. Sometimes it's, it's obvious, uh, but okay, then, then it's easy to do, but it's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that I haven't really said it to anyone so far, but yeah, I see it. I see that crashing, okay. and I also see this flapping thing where, like, there's clearly some some we're missing some locks, or or something that's causing some drama. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to deal with that. But anyway, so okay. the, the way that now this works is when you go and you you deploy the um, the Nephew workload cluster. Mm -hmm. um, so so at, for deploying the clusters, you deploy this one. And, PBS. Uh, it, well, the, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 the PBS yeah. will will do this. Yeah. Then I think you do apply replacements with all the mutation. I think. Right. So the so the one thing that this the, the one sort of automation that this has is that whatever name you clone it, clone it to becomes the name of the cluster. So that becomes yes. cluster name, yeah. and then that gets propagated through this apply replacements down through these different PVs and to this workload cluster resource which of course then this gets then applied to the management cluster. So all of these resources, all these PVs and the workload cluster resource all get applied to the management cluster. And yep. um, so we, we will have a, a catalog of all the workload clusters um, that are- In the management server, in the management server that are, yeah, somehow right. activated or yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, it doesn't tie status. It doesn't do right. There's a lot of things it doesn't do, yeah. but yeah. that's what it has right now. Um, so you could use that as the input and, and, and based like on our discussion on Slack, like I, I think you're absolutely right. Like ideally this becomes the thing where you express, I want a workload cluster and I want it to have these ciders and I, I need it. I got all these requirements for that workload cluster. Uh, it needs to support this CNI. It needs to support auto scaling or not. It needs to support blah, blah, blah. And then theoretically, we have some mechanism on controller that can make a selection of this upstream PV cluster upstream based upon that. I, obviously that's not our one, but I, I agree that that's the direction this should be heading. Yeah. But okay, yeah. So yeah, so, so the thing is the difference between what you have right now and what I, I, what we have to do for the workloads is that, so you control the package names in the PVS, right? Yes. Whereas I need to be scheduling to repos, which are the cluster somehow, right? Yes. All right, so wait, so that is one, that, uh, there is two ways to do this. I think one is I was looking, uh, so the initial thing I was looking at the repository selector. So yes. maybe I can share my screen. Uh, I have a little bit. Because right now we name the repository the same as the cluster and we that should be sufficient. 
Yeah, so so the thing that I what I was uh, so this is what I was cooking right now. You need to move this so, to bigger screen so I can see. Uh, okay. I, I'm just looking at my bigger screen. That's all. Not, not my email or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So upstream template downstream. Okay. So what you want to do your template downstream. Um, I just want to change the name uh, because otherwise it gets this. So, so that's this one. But what I was right. uh, struggling with is how could I get access to the values that were selected in this expression? And you tell me that I was just looking at, so there is a way you can set that is what you're saying? Yes. So that's that would be uh, look at the package variant API, package variant template. Yeah. Yep. This one here. Then, yeah. Yep, that you're showing, we scroll down a little bit. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, package context template. Uh, no, not package context template. Uh, it should be like should be a downstream. Yeah, this one. So in the top here, downstream. downstream template. Template. That's, yeah. yeah, that's the one I was using. Yeah. Uh, but there is an expression. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't use that yet. Okay. So yeah. And, and it's in this expression. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. So this is the package expression, and then with so here we can instead yeah. of using this. I could use what is it, the repository as you said the repository. Actually, I think you want repository expression. But you want the, the package name is fine to be the same. You want the repository to be different, right? But but actually uh, you don't yeah. need to put it there because it's already going to put it in the different repository. Yes, correct. But what I want to, to have is that the I, a value. So so this basically helps uh, PVs and, and packages to be put in the right place, right? So that's fine. Even with okay. this statement here, I could do that, right? Okay. The problem is I would like, I, I want to have uh, within the data of the package, I want to have the cluster uh, information or that cluster that got selected or that repo that got selected, whatever way we do it. I want that information to exist somewhere in the data. I, I don't care which data. Right. Ideally, it should be part of uh, what we call cluster context, but we could also, yeah, we, uh, yeah so let's, you, let's, that's, uh, the that's the injector. So not in the downstream, you, what you want to do is go. Uh, but the in injector, okay, I, yeah, I need to, I, I can do two things. I do an injector template. Should I do yeah. that? Yes. So you'd say injectors so, and then you'd say. Um, so this one is fine, I think. Uh, Right, yeah. and I can then do injectors. Injectors, and then and then there's a list. Uh, it seems. Yeah, and all you care about is name, so you just say uh, you just say name expression. Okay, uh, name expression. This one. Yep. Name expression is repository dot name. Repository dot name. And then, and then you'd say. You could say kind uh, workload. Yeah, I need to put it onto a resource somewhere, right? Kind will be cluster context, I guess. Uh, sorry, it's, kind will be. Well, okay. So here's where it gets funky. Okay. This is okay. where you get to that. I want to change this API. Um, okay. So the way these injectors work right now, it's a matching algorithm. So it starts with what's in the package. And what's in the package is an injection point, And it's got a GVK. Yes. And so in, if, if you look at the, yeah, so you, if you look at like. Yeah. You, you, need, yeah, you need to resource, what I, what I saw in the code is you are trying, I, the, one of the things that it checks, it checks whether there is a resource within the package that has, uh, that is uh, aligned with uh, this stuff somehow. Is that correct? Right. That's what I, so basically you don't need to specify the kind here because what it's going to do is it's going to say, find all the injection points, then take the GVK from the injection point, look for those GVKs in the cluster and match them by name. And, and it should find exactly one because it's by name and it'll replace it. So, but the injection points are what? The injection points are, are they not resource, specific? The injection points are specific resources within the package. That are assigned by the package variant? They're, so they're how do you? by the package okay. author of the upstream package there. And how, so that is an annotation or something? Is yeah. that an, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. So I, I have your, uh, what is, what is, 
the do, 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 do. here look this is your stuff so the, do they have yes, look so at here pv, PV cluster for example yeah, pv cluster wait copy it is i think right cluster copy it. no no uh i know pv cluster oh, yes, okay. yes 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 cluster copy kind wait cluster, cluster copy kind. here did you, you have this I, okay so you put okay. here this annotation okay yeah you do it by the annotation so this is saying okay. you need to it's required you need to you need to inject this and so okay and it will mutate a name so basically it will it will copy uh, the, the name i okay so the name here is going to be replaced with that uh, stuff okay well so what's going to happen is that this name this this repository.name it will look in the cluster for a resource with that name and the same GVK as the injection point. And if it finds it, it will copy the spec from the cluster to the injection point. So, so this cluster spec cluster.name will get replaced by the one that's in the cluster. And we're we're locating the one that's in the cluster by name, which is- Ah, uh, okay, I see, I see, I see. So basically this will give me, let's say H1, right? It yeah. will go to the workload, I will to the real API uh, of yeah. the management cluster. Yeah. And if it sees a match, it will replace this object, only yes. the spec of that object? Yes, only the spec, yes. Okay. And it will annotate that object in the package to say, I replaced the spec with this particular resource and tell you which one. Um, so so uh, let me see if my VM is still up. Um, okay, yeah, I see. So, but in other, in other words, this, if I put this in the blueprint package, uh, whatever, yeah. then this will be, the cluster name will be replaced with H1. Exactly, yes. And the whole okay. contents will be replaced with whatever the whole contents is in the management cluster. So if you have- Yeah, uh, whether that is five times more parameters, uh, we yeah. couldn't care less at the end of the day. But then I, that's why my comment was uh, in Slack, John, why do we retain cluster context? Because- You're right. We, at, we, I think you're, you're probably right. We probably shouldn't. Um, the, the, the reason I had it was, um, was was kind of mixing these requirements versus uh, the, the requires versus provides. So so we need a, a resource that says, hey, me, the cluster, Cappy cluster kind package, I can provision a cluster that has this CNI type and this uh, uh, master yeah. interface. So so it's not master interface, for example, is the, the thing like that's not an intent thing. I don't give a crap what the master. I interface. agree. I agree with you. We are abusing a little bit, but we are abusing because we don't have status and stuff like that. Right. So we are. So at the moment, OK, a cluster has always the same uh, pieces, even yeah. with cluster context, that would be the case uh, for us. Yes, so, they're mixed already. Yeah. And yeah, they so, are. I, I, yeah. Master interface is actually a status object. It. Yeah. We can get rid of it and we can put CNI type in here because that's a requirement. I need this CNI type. We happen to only yeah. be able to satisfy it with like, you know, a limited thing, but then um, the CNI master interface, maybe we don't put in here and we keep in some other demographic. Or we put in status, we put in status. Maybe, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, actually that might make perfect sense. Um, I actually have to run. Um, no, no, sure, sure. But I think it clarifies because what it for me was unclear is the link to the real management cluster and then the tie back into the cluster. Okay, yeah. that's the part that I missed or that I was not sure about. Okay, but now I get it. So I will test uh, this and uh, let you know where I'm getting, but uh, I got it. Yeah, thanks Thanks for your time. Yeah, appreciate it. See you later. Yeah, cheers.